I'm with my uh, good friend of my assemblyman, uh, Joe Saladino, and we're talking about uh, you know two years ago, uh, you know, Superstorm Sandy and the, uh, and the and the struggles that people are still having to this day. I saw it firsthand as a survivor impacted. My home was entirely destroyed in a hurricane. Waves breaking inside the house for seven hours. Saw it firsthand as a survivor impacted. My home was entirely destroyed in a hurricane. Waves breaking inside the house for seven hours. Saw it firsthand as a survivor impacted. My home was entirely destroyed in a hurricane. Waves breaking inside the house for seven hours. Okay, um, I'd like to know the building files I reviewed today. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make sure that they're the complete building, building files, that there, there's not going to be any other. I, I requested to view all the, all the files for each property. I just want to make sure that, um, for instance, uh, if there, there were uh, items that I thought might have needed to be in a building file that they weren't, I don't want to say, oh, this is missing this, and then find out. Like I have in the past, that oh well, you didn't seal the building files. So, was that all, was that was that specifically for foil number twenty seven eight sixty eight? Twenty seven eight sixty eight. Yeah, that's one twenty three Stillwater Stillwater Avenue. One twenty three Stillwater. That's that's the. I think uh, just it to you. Yeah, no, I looked at it and everything. Yeah. You know, I checked it. I just want to make sure that that's the complete file, so I can consider the the request as closed. As far as we know, absolutely. Okay. Okay, that's what we requested from the building department. That's what we were supplied. Okay. Saw it firsthand as a survivor impacted. My home was entirely destroyed in a hurricane. Waves breaking inside the house for seven hours. is a uh, resolution is a gentleman that, that is applying it says the town's in receipt for an application for a permit to erect maintain alter and improve a dock pier float bulkhead or other mooring I started thinking about this because I had met with Mr. Kashigano and Tim Zyke a number of times reviewing building files in association with the possible misappropriation of municipal funds right down a block from your house at 135 Stillwater and we had an, we had an opportunity to review the building filed 135 still water, and at the time I was also re reviewing Frank Anton Tommaso's building file. He's a former uh, Department of Public Works Commissioner, and you know Frank Anton Tommaso is Mr. Saldino. So what I noticed was in Mr. Anton Tommaso's building file, there were no permits or anything from 207 onwards. And then I actually reviewed your building file, Mr. Saladino, and I was ensured that I had, I had reviewed the complete building file, and I noticed that in your file, there are no building permits or anything from 207 onwards. Coincidentally, you had some bulkhead work done. It looked like you had your bulkhead done and you had applied to have like a, a dock and a breakwater done, but it doesn't look like you did that. At the very same time in 207 that Frank had to Tommaso did, and it looks like you both used the same companies to do it. But what I was able to determine by using Google Earth satellite images is that your home, Mr. Mr. Uh, Saladino, was pretty, pretty badly damaged by Irene and Sandy, I have pictures of it here. And I was able to compile a chronological list of how the work was performed at your house. And here's what it looks like now, substantial construction done. And the same thing for Mr. Antetomaso. Now, I don't think it's fair that a resident has to, to file and go through this when the supervisor and, and vendors that are associated with the town of Oyster Bay apparently do construction on their homes without applying for the correct permits or COs or anything. So I've prepared a code enforcement, a request for investigation both on your premises and on Mr. Antetomaso's premises, and I'd like to turn them into you with these photographs to substantiate what I'm saying right now, directly to you. And I would ask, and I would hope, I'd ask Mr. Casciano at the last meeting that we resume our, our meetings to review all this information because residents still want to know what's happening at 135. I'm just going to let, let the record show, man, Mr. DeClerc. Um, 
Sorry, Mr. Altman. Uh, residents still want to find out what's happening at 135 Stillwater, what's going on at 2 Dolphin, what's going on with, with Joe Mar, and now what the permit conditions are with our supervisor here. Um, on to 109, 108, 109. These, these, uh, I had brought this up a couple of ago. You had come up to speak about 71 Jeff Jefferson, but then I I 71 Jefferson Place, Massapequa. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you came up to speak on Resolution 103. Yeah, I just finished. I'm moving on to 108. Look, look, what, what, I, I, maybe I missed. What was the issue with... The issue is I don't think it's fair that this president has to go through this this subject and maybe pay fines or process fees, and you know that's the issue. That's not the case. Thank you. Um, I'm with my uh, good friend of my assemblyman, uh, Joe Saladino, and we're talking about, uh, you know, Two years ago, uh, you know, Superstorm Sandy and the, uh, and the and the struggles that people are still having to this day. First of all, thank you for that, and it's very true. It's probably one of the reasons my home's not done yet. Five. I, actually, I want to speak to you about a number of these because these are those property themes again, and these all have to do with notices of violations being issued. And quite frankly, I, I think that it's both it's it's hypocritical and a conflict of interest for you to vote on any of these resolutions because. From what I've seen, Mr. S Mr. Interim Supervisor, you don't follow the town's building codes yourself. All right, I've made a complaint based on your property, and I just want to say the last person that I saw that acted the way that you did with building files was Mr. Ippolito. I saw it firsthand as a survivor impacted. My home was entirely destroyed in a hurricane, waves breaking inside the house for seven hours. So I have a couple more questions that I've been asking you since you got elected here, and maybe you can provide the answers to these too. Because nobody else can, only you can. Who else was interviewed before you approved Justin McCaffrey's 211 waiver? You told me 26 people. Why did you hire a non-resident as the town attorney? How did you set the salary of the deputy supervisor and town attorney without the town board ad adopting such fire resolution as per New York State law? How did you have your personal home cleaned up after Sandy by TOB sanitation crews and why didn't you obtain the required permits before you rebuilt your home? Why did former town attorney Lena Genova and Councilwoman Alicia conspire to hire Jeffrey Lesser to represent John, John Vendetto and Len Genova in their criminal and civil actions? Those are questions that I've been asking you and the board members since, since you were appointed and you haven't answered any of them. If you'd like to answer them now, I, I'd love to sit down and listen to what you have to say. Thank you. Our oh, next speaker is Robert <laughs> Wade. Take that up now. From Cross River. Saw it firsthand as a survivor impacted. My home was entirely destroyed in a hurricane. Waves breaking inside the house for seven hours. First of all, thank you for that. And it's very true. It's probably one of the reasons my home's not done yet. In the light of transparency, yes. And I'm going to give you, Mr. Supervisor, I'm going to, and then I'm going to leave. In the light of transparency, I'm going to give you an opportunity to clear up. Really, I'm, I'm setting you up right now to clear up something that is really, in my opinion, defaming your reputation. Not reputation. I don't, I, that's not what I, don't I mean. Believe it's, that it's, to giving, be it's giving the public a bad impression to... about you coming in as transparent and ethical when you have been accused of violating the town code, and it Thank shocks you, me sir. that you don't even respond to it. Sir, sir, we appreciate your testimony. You don't want to respond to that? Sir, I Why don't you just, why don't you be honest? You say, honest, and why don't you say, I'm in compliance, or I made a mistake, or I'm, I'm working on it. Why don't you say something? It's hurting your, your persona. Thank you for your testimony. Oh, oh. We very much Unbelievable. Mr. Saracusa is next. Unbelievable. Who? Saw it firsthand as a survivor impacted. My home was entirely destroyed in a hurricane. Waves breaking inside the house for seven hours. He's a duck. Hello? Mr. Rip. Hello? Hi. Bob Rip? Yes, who's this? Michael Esposito, Town of Voice Today. How are you? Pretty good. Okay, listen, your uh, complaints have been forwarded to me, and I'm 
here to respond what's going on on these properties. 123 Stillwell and 1 Dolphin. You there? I'm listening to you. Okay. So on 313, Mr. Saladino submitted an application to legalize the structures I'm so, on his I'm, property. I'm sorry. Could, would you be able to provide this to me via email? Is that, uh, you have a pro is that okay? No, I, I can't do that. Why not? Because I, I you know... Because why? I mean, you're telling it to me verbally. It would be a lot easier for me to deal with it if you could just write it down and email it to me. I don't think it should be a problem. Listen, this is our procedure. I'm allowed to speak with the complainant and the owner. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What procedure? What procedure? What procedure, I, I what procedure, really what procedure okay. are you referring to? Excuse me? What procedure did you just refer to? This is your procedure because... Code enforcement procedure. Okay, Those listen. The complainant I, I, I'm referring... I call them back and tell them what the status is. Okay, listen, I, I was actually just in, in in the process of emailing back uh, Mrs. Macaron, I think her name is pronounced, because I, I'm not sure what the code enforcement procedure is, but I know what the open meetings law and the public uh, officers law procedure is. And there's some information that could be withheld and redacted. But there's plenty of information that could be produced. And I've, I've reviewed hundreds of code compliance case investigations in the town up there. And there's no, there's no reason why you can't provide me this information in writing. Okay, speak to Mrs. Macaron. If she wants me to do that, I'll be more than happy to do it. Okay, now you can, if, you want to, if you want to proceed verbally, go right ahead. And then I'll contact her and I'll ask you to, okay. uh, to be put in writing again. So for 123 Stillwater... Mr. Saladino submitted an application to legalize the structures on his property on March 13th. On March 21st, he came in and renewed his bulkhead permit. Okay? You with me? I'm listening to you, yes, sir. Okay. Now, on One Dolphin Drive, uh, Mr. Antetomaso was in and met with the commissioner on, this, on March 21st, where he was giving a... Verbal notice of violation. A verbal file. A verbal notice of violation. Yes. Is that is, it, is that is that something new? I've never heard of that one. No, from the commissioner. She's she's allowed to do it. That he must file within thirty days for the structures on his property. Okay, so no, there were no written notices of violations issued to either the interim supervisor, Mr. Saladino, or the former commissioner of of planning and development and current contractor, Frank Anto Tomasa. No. Okay. All right. I really appreciate your update. I'm sorry to, uh, yep. you know, I'm sorry. I, I just have to document things as best as I can. So very good. it's nothing personal. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Unbelievable. Selective enforcement. saw it firsthand as a survivor impacted. My home was entirely destroyed in the hurricane, waves breaking inside the house for seven hours. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I have a little bit of a hearing discrepancy. Miss Monaco? Good Monaco, Good Monaco. Steve and David. Okay, hi, nice to meet you. Hello, nice to speak with you, how can I help you? So, um, I'd like to report what I believe is a dangerous condition at address 123 Stillwater Avenue, Massapequa, okay. New York. Okay, and what is the dangerous condition there? I believe that after Superstorm Sandy, the electric was, uh, actually, the, the home was completely destroyed during Sandy, and it's been rebuilt without any permits, plans, inspections. Uh, there's no certificate of occupancy for the home, and uh, I don't understand how the power was turned back on. I mean, I, I know what... what Myself and uh, relatives of mine had to go through. I live right in the same neighborhood. And because there's no underwriter certificate, there's no proof that the work done there was done safely, I think the power should be immediately shut down until it can be inspected. I mean, the owner of the property, I've, I've, I've made an official complaint through the town of Oyster Bay on the property, and the owner of the property has admitted that he's in violation of, of all these building codes, that he doesn't have any of these permits. So, so... Uh, either you need to get somebody out there to to, to justify you know the, the the power being supplied there, or you or you need to shut it down until you do because 
uh, any, I mean, the owner of the property did a radio show. Uh, he made a videotape where he admits he had seven foot waves going through the house. The whole house was destroyed. Now it's been completely rebuilt with any records of how it was rebuilt. Who knows? The, ne- the next, the next strong wind could knock that house over, or, or, or there could be wires grounding out behind the walls right now that we don't know about. I mean, this is, this is a unique situation because the property owner is, is a former New York State Assemblyman who was recently appointed as the supervisor of the town of Oyster Bay. And he, he I mean, he represented other, other residents of the town during Superstorm Sandy while they dealt, you know, with their reconstruction and rebuilding everything. And, and this guy is perfectly aware of, of what his his responsibilities were when he was rebuilding. And, you know, it's just insane that that somebody in this position of responsibility just disregarded all the, lo- the rules and the laws and, and rebuilt his home like this. I mean, who, like I say, who knows what, what type of worker who did the work there? Well, you're, well, you're, you're, li- you're liable now because I'm reporting it to you. Yeah, but we don't get usually involved when, it's like, I mean, I know you're not like a tenant, but I mean, this is like somebody else kind listen, of telling on somebody else. Listen, so I, you're not I, electrician. I can't, I'm not, first of all, I'm not telling on anyone. I'm not telling on anyone, and and uh, I'm, I'm reporting a hazardous condition to the power company as well. Well, you don't even that. know if it's hazardous. You think it might be hazardous because right, you're right. saying he did this without permits, but I agree. I mean, I agree. he's still hired electricians and maybe everything is done according to how it's maybe everything is set up how it's supposed to be you know I don't know well I could tell you that I've reviewed the building file with town officials for this property and there are there are no there are no documents to substantiate that any work was done to that house since the year 2007 okay so if there was a fire underwriter certificate it would be in the building file Okay, it's not in the building file, and, and the owner of the property has admitted such. So, you know, I can't make you do anything. All right, all I could do is report to you what's going on. And, but and I'm going to document it. I'm going to see if there is if there's anything we can do. Okay, I mean, let's, I'm not arguing with you about it by all means. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I just, just want to make sure I, that. I, I just didn't want you to think like, okay, we'll be there. You know, oh no, no, today listen, to listen. Turn it off. I mean, maybe listen. we can. Meet. Normally, when when someone is calling us to say this needs to be disconnected, and it's not usually a neighbor, it's it's an electrician that's saying that they're physically on site, they're a licensed electrician, and that the power is unsafe and we need to turn it off, or it's the fire department or it's the police department, but like another neighbor can't report it, you know? Uh, we've I never, understand. I've never taken a call like that. I understand this is a unique situation. I just, you know, I, I can't, I can just, you know, stress that it's something I believe that you need to follow up on. Okay, well, I'll definitely see if there's anything that we can do about it. If we, if, you know, maybe, I mean, at least drive by and check how the electric is going into the house, you know, that would probably be the very, you know, see, I mean, because we don't go inside. Right, you, know? you would, you would, re- but the home would have required an underwriter certificate before you would hook up the power. Yeah, I'm not yeah. really sure. Sh- no, yeah, sure I, 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 know. I, I know. I know. You know, unfortunately, I don't know what, you know, possibly, especially if this is by the water. Um, after Sandy, I'm, I'm sure. But I just can't really comment on what okay. they did. We don't know. You know, I know you said you checked into it, but I don't have um, our department that would get those temp certificates. It's a totally different department, so I don't have access to what kind of, if they did get an underwriter certificate. Could, could I, I don't ask have you, access to those I, files. Could I just ask one favor? Would... Would would you or someone else from from uh, the power company be able just to uh, contact me and let me know what the, what your resolution was to the issue? Um, I'll call you back to see oh, if thanks. there's anything that we could do, or I'll call and I'll, I'll call you back either if it if it might be you know this is customer owned and like this, a customer did this to their house that's why they have homeowners insurance you know and if 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 it happens that their house goes up and you know it, like starts if their house goes on fire yeah, you know but, but, they never but, went through the proper channels with us so we wouldn't be liable you know I don't know if that's what the answer is going to be but right, I can definitely right. call you back okay all right listen I really appreciate you. Uh, 
taking a look into this situation. Like I said, okay. I, I know it's a unique situation. No problem. And I just want to make sure the number that I would call you back on, is that 516-541-2415? Yes. It is. Okay. All right. So Thank I'll you call you back much. myself when I. It, it, it might be even tomorrow. Just okay, in no, case. No, I don't, you no, know, I don't want to give you wrong no, information. No problem. So I, I, I would rather have you take your time and get the correct information. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mister. I appreciate Thank you, Mr. that. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye. 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 Saw it firsthand as a survivor. Impacted. My home was entirely destroyed in a hurricane. Waves breaking inside the house for seven hours. the office of Governor Andrew M. Cuomo. Our normal business hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. To contact the governor directly, you may send a fax to 518-474-1513 or send mail to the Honorable Andrew M. Cuomo, New York State Executive Chamber, State Capitol, Albany, New York, 12224. You may also contact him through his website at www.governor.ny.gov. To best address your call, please choose from the following options. To leave a message sharing your ideas and opinions to help shape New York's future, please press 1. To speak to an agent, please press 2. Please hold while we transfer your call to the next available agent. Uh, did this be a while? Executive Chamber. Hi, how do you do? Uh, who am I speaking with? Good, how are you? Excuse me? Hi, my name's Javon. Hi, m my name is Robert Ripp. I'm calling, hey. uh, the reason I'm calling is I'd like to share some information I think is very important. Um, I live in the town of Oyster Bay. It's in it's on Long Island, and recently, let me let me start again. Uh, this information has to do with New York Rising, and I think there's been some misappropriation of funds by by uh, government officials. And I have some information I'd like to share. Uh, I I have all the records. I have all the records to substantiate what I'm going to tell you. I've I provided right, it to. Hold on, and I'll get you to the right office here. One moment. All right, thanks. Hi, Camille. Uh, my name is Robert Ripp. I'm calling because I believe I have evidence of a misappropriation of New York Rising funds um, actually perpetrated by officials, New York State officials. Um, I, my, I, I said my name is Robert Ripp. I reside at 77 Sunset Road, Massapequa, New York, 11758. Can you spell your last name? I'm uh, so sorry. Can you spell your last name for me, Robert? Sure. It's R-I-P-P. I'm sorry? R-I-P-P. Like P like Peter? P P, is that right? No, P like Peter. So that's R as in Roger, I as in Ink? T as in Tom, P as in Peter? No, it's R as in Roger, I as in Ink, P as in Peter, P as in Peter. Very well. That's okay, I'm sorry, how do you spell your last name? My name is spelled W as in Wall, A as in Apple, L as in Larry, C as in Cat, O as in Oat, T as in Tom, P as in Tom. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the reason I'm calling is, so I live in the town of Oyster Bay, and uh, recently I, I inspected or reviewed building files associated with town officials, specifically a gentleman by the name of Joseph Saladino. He, he was the ninth district assemblyman for my area, 
He resides at 123 Stillwater Avenue, Massapequa, New York, 11758. And, and I reviewed Mr. Saladino's building file within the Town of Oyster Bay Building Department. I did a Freedom of Inform Information request to do so. And what I discovered was that Mr. Saladino had no history of permits or building plans or surveys or applications or anything from the year 207 onwards. In fact, the, the last files associated with his building in the file were an application to rebuild his, his bulkhead and his dock, which he never followed up on. That was 207. So um, Mr. Saladino has a bayfront home in Long Island. It was completely destroyed uh, during Superstorm Sandy. Uh, he made video, radio uh, presentations in which he explained that his house was destroyed. Now, his house was rebuilt with, with no plans or permits or anything. And recently, I've done, uh, I have an ongoing Freedom of Information request with your office in which, in which I was denied my request for this information pertaining to this property, New York Rising. So, it leads, I, I'm, I'm retired uh, from law enforcement myself. So I'm led to believe because I didn't get a letter saying that there were no such documents. Instead, I was given a denial based on uh, uh, privacy claims, which I already appealed it because the denial doesn't hold water at all. And I'll have to do it. If I have to do an Article 78, I'm going to do it. But what's, what I have, what's going on here is in this township, it turns out that this group, Lyro, what, apparently was awarded the... the uh, the job of, of dishing out the money for rising and, and Lero Group is a, uh, a big political contributor to Town of Oyster Bay politicians such as John Vendetto, who was recently indicted on corruption charges. Mr. Saladino was appointed by the same group uh, to, to replace Mr. Vendetto. Now, it, apparently, Mr. Saladino somehow received New York Rising funds, grant funds, and never rebuilt this house, and I've 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 now become pretty much an expert on what's required to obtain these grant funds, and it's impossible that Mr. Saladino could have supplied the necessary permits and everything to obtain the grant funds. So I, I'd like to report this to your office. And uh, apparently, I've I've reviewed more than one town official in the town of Oyster Bay's building file, and it looks like. Um, there's more than one house that was rebuilt without plans and permits. And now I plan to do additional FOIL requests to get the information from those properties also. But it, their, their very likelihood could be a, uh, an organized uh, scheme going on here in the town of Oyster Bay. Hey, well, thanks for um, reaching out. Um, <laughs> well, listen, I have, I have all the documents. I have all the documents to substantiate this, and I've provided them to the local district attorney, who, who apparently is going to begin an investigation, and also to the FBI. So I'd like to provide them to someone in your office also. That's the reason I'm calling. So I hope I'm not just going to get a thank you for reaching out. I hope you're going to follow up on this. Well, I'm going to pass on the information um, internally, um, and I'm just going to need a number where you may be reached, uh, yeah. Mr. Rep. That would be 516. 541 541 2415 2415 Yes, would you be able to tell me who you would be passing this on to? Like what department? Um, well, we have our head here of the constituent services um, the chief officer and their executive director and I'll forward over that information to them. Okay, could, could you provide me with their names? I'm not familiar with, with who's, who's uh, in charge of it. So, Lisa Bova Hyatt and Ann Fenton. Ann Fenton directly will be, um, I will be speaking with directly, um, oh. who heads the um, constituent services and intergovernmental affairs. Okay, I really appreciate you passing on. I hope, that, I hope to hear from someone because I really think this is a big problem. I mean, I don't understand how this guy is an assemblyman who's supposed to be working for other people, evidently looks like he got his money first and, and he didn't even rebuild his house to do anything with it. Or if, it's, I really don't understand the whole thing. And I'm, I'm, quite frankly, I'm shocked at the runaround I'm getting from your office with, in regards to my FOIL request. I was wondering if there's something you could do to help me out with that. Um, I'm so speaking with... Uh, eight, eight, and we'll uh, be able to address that um, and so she'll pass on that information. I, I believe... Um, yeah, let me let me have her 
that's that's a, a, Adrian. I don't know if you know a, Adrian Jackson or Adriana Jackson. That's who I'm dealing Adriana with. Jackson. Yeah, that's okay. that's who I'm dealing with. My FOIL request. I don't know. If she's. I don't, I don't even know if she's really the FOIL officer or anything. You know what I mean? Right, and so she is. Okay. And um, and so there's a process, and I so I can't speak on the legal um um you know requirements. Sure, I, I understand that. Oil. M- maybe um, maybe maybe. I'm sure that they're following protocol in that respect. Um, well, I, I disagree with you there. I'm, I'm, I'm quite frankly, I'm an expert on freedom of information, and they they gave me a decision that I mean. I don't expect you to understand it because you're not, not because you wouldn't understand it, but because you're just not familiar with, with what I'm requesting. All right. But, but uh, it's simply just like a BS blanket excusal, which doesn't hold water. As a matter of fact, like uh, Robert Freeman in the Committee on Open Government, he knows, he knows who, who I am. He's done multiple advisory opinions for me, and I've asked him for one on this. And uh, I can tell you right now, they have to give me the information. They, they, can, they can redact the the identifying information, but everything else I'm entitled to get. And, and I'm really, well. I'm really, I'm really flabbergasted that it makes me, it almost makes me wonder like there's some kind of cover up or something going on that they wouldn't just provide me with the information. But that's, that's you. you know, but, but um, I appreciate, well, I, I appreciate you I passing wish, on my information. No worries. I will absolutely pass that on. And let me just confirm the phone number again, 516-541-2415. Yes. Is correct? Yes. Okay. I, all right. Right, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for reaching out, and um, I'll have someone follow up with you. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. You're welcome. Now. Bye-bye. You too.